Hello and welcome to this video. So carrying directly on from the last one then, I've got the Flask server running down the bottom here in the console and I've also in another terminal got the uh, update of the API data running. So you need to have both those running for anything to work in this video. If you go to the website and actually click load data, you'll notice we get some errors in the console. So we need to fix those and we need to start loading the data actually from our API rather than a file. So going back into the app.js, at the moment we're fetching this data.json and now we're actually needing to fetch from our API endpoint, which is our KPI underscore data. We're going to add something else onto the end of this, and it's an option that you can do with the fetch library, and that's just to tell it not to cache anything. Now, if you're loading files or images, what you'll find very often is the browser doesn't detect any updates or changes because uh, it's got one in the cache and they do pretty well with caching. It makes them fast, but you can force it not to cache. Now, it shouldn't cache any data from our API, but just in case something goes on there, we'll add this option in to really say don't do any caching of any information back from this route. So now we've got that working, what we need to do is we need to update the index.html to actually deal with our new API. Because you remember that we've now got two keys inside our API. I'll just go back to the data prep. Our API is now an object with a key price data and a key updated. So I'll take that key price data and now we want to do item in KPI data dot price data to actually load the price data correctly. Now when the app runs with this, it's going to take the KPI data and try to see if there's a price data key. The problem is our KPI data is completely undefined. So we're going to hack this a little bit and just make it an undefined object for now and hit save. Now if I go back to the web app and press load data, we've got the data as expected updated. So the next thing we need to do here is we actually need to get this data updating automatically. And we want the data also to load immediately when we load the application rather than clicking the load button because we want it to be automatically up to date. Now view comes with like what are called lifecycle methods. So one of those is called uh, created. So there are various functions built into view instances. One of them is called created that are called at various points during the lifecycle of a, a view instance. So when it's created, when it's destroyed and things like that. So the created one is called when it's first created and it's at that point we would like to load our data. So we'll type this load data. So that loads our data for us once automatically. So if I refresh the web app, I get my table there instantly. Now the other thing I'd like to do though is I'd like to make this update, this call to the API every few seconds. So in the back end at the moment in the Python, we're updating the data.json every minute. So we certainly want to load more frequently than that. And the way we do that is using something called a set timeout. So down in the load data at the bottom, we can type set timeout. And then we have to say what function we want to call at the end of the timeout. It's load data in our case and how long, and that's in milliseconds. So we'll say we'll call the update every 15 seconds. And what we can also do is we can log to the console that we're loading our data. So what this all should do then is have the effect that when we create our application, we call our load data and load some data. Loading data should be written to the console. We load our data and when all of that's done, then we set the timeout saying, please call this function again in 15 seconds time. Before we go and look at the application, one last little thing that I'd like to do is just make some adjustments to the header at the top here. So we can now add something onto this and we can just add the date that this was updated. So we can say kpi.data.updated. And now when I refresh the application, the table is loaded automatically and we can get the date that the script was last updated. And what you should see down in the console then, after 15 seconds or so, I've just got one that's appeared here, is this loading data. I'm gonna wait for another one. Okay, and there's a second one. So every 15 seconds, we're getting this uh, call to update our KPI data. So coming back after a few minutes, what you should notice then is that after a few updates, you get the updated time up here and then you get the last most recent completed minute candle with all of the indicators here. So that completes the first part of the web dash, which is actually having some live KPIs and showing you how to do some live updating of the data. The next bit I'd like to do is that when we click on one of the pairs, we actually show the candle chart of the recent prices for the granularity in question on the chart. So we'll make a start with that then in the next video. Thanks very much for watching this one and see you then.